Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, joining us today. This summer alone, he became a Commonwealth champion and a World Championships uh, bronze medalist twice in the 100 free and the 100 fly Com Games champ in the 100 fly and bronze medalist in the 50 free and 400 free relay. Today, we're sitting down with newly minted Florida Gator, Josh Leendo. How's it going, man? Good, good. I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, I I thought I'd been busy, but you have been all over the place the last few weeks. I'm yeah. I'm sure you're adjusting to a lot. I'm excited to talk to you about this and your summer as a whole. So let's let's start with uh, you're in Gainesville now. What prompted this move to Florida, especially after at least to our knowledge, you know, you weren't really planning on looking at the NCAA or, or going to the United States so quickly. So tell us about this move to Florida for you. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, I was honestly looking at going pro right at, at some point and, and looking at my options there, like I'd sign a deal with, with Speedo and was kind of looking at my options in terms of what it looked like to, to go, to go pro and, maybe like take a little longer to do some, some school. Um, and then just like, just the way things went and like, um, the coaching situation, obviously, um, with, um, obviously my coach Ben, um, before our trials, um, after that kind of whole situation happened, um, I got a coach Nesty re- reached out to me. And then that, at that point, that's where I started considering, um, cause obviously they got a, a great education down here and obviously also a, a group of, um, world-class, uh, swimmers in here. Um, so that's when I started really looking at the opportunity to come down to Gainesville and, uh, train with the Gators. And then when, when did that decision become final for you? Um, everyone here makes fun of me cause it was just kind of just like bang, bang, bang. I just made the decision, came here, started training, started school. Um, so it was pretty, I uh, like pretty like recent uh, the decision because obviously I still had a big summer that I wanted to focus on. Obviously doing well at Worlds, doing well at Commonwealth, um, not trying to get too distracted by you know some some outside things, and but at the same time um, considering options for my for my future. Um, so um, just like super recently, like after Commonwealth had the decision finalized and started getting. You know everything sorted with you know housing and stuff like that um, moving down here um and then i made the decision and he- here i am in gainesville yeah i mean especially with the summer you had that's just yeah like i said like you said it's a lot it's a lot of movement um mm-hmm. and it's a big decision to make again between world championships calm games um obviously ben leaving but uh, I'm excited <laughs> that you're down in Gainesville. Um, how has it been so far? You've been down there I don't know, a few weeks, a month at this point. Um, what what's training been like, and how do you feel like you've adjusted so far? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's been good. I took a little bit of a break because um, I had the obviously a busy summer. Um, came back and like got everything sorted with classes and everything like that. Um, kind of moved back into it slow in terms of uh, in the in the uh, swimming piece. Um, and it's been good. They've got some good structure here. Um, classes are going well. So the practices are going well. They got some, some good, obviously a a great group and some great swimmers here, which is, which is exciting. Um, and, and a big group and everyone works hard here, which, you know, you always love to see. Um, and I mean, it's been good. I, I, I do really like this group and like the environment that they've, that they've built here. And I'm excited to be a part of something like that. So in terms of the day-to-day for practices, are you mostly with Steve, with the the sprint coach there? Are you kind of all over? Um, What does your weekly structure look like, at least so far, for with uh, coaches and athletes that you've trained with? Yeah, so it's like it's still like earlier on, but right now it looks like I'm I'm more with Steve, you know, more on the 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 sprint side. Um, But the way the structure works right now. 
trying to get everyone back into shape. So we would have, you know, like the group would be together for a portion of the practice and then they'd kind of break off into the main groups or the sprint mid distance distance. And I'll be, you know, on the, on the speed side. Um, and that's kind of how it, it splits off when it's time to go to, you know, some race specific or like sets, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Was, was training with Caleb a draw or, or a factor that, that came into this at all, especially considering, you know, on the international stage, you guys swim the same events. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, like obviously it cut coming down here and being able to train with the best, I mean, not even just Caleb. I mean, Bobby Fink, I've had a chance to train with him. You know, he's, he's a really good trainer, this guy. And, um, I was doing, I was doing some fly kick the other day and I was like, like, you know, this guy, he is quick, you know, for, for a distance guy. So, I mean, it's, it, it's been great. Um, obviously getting to know here, I've, I have some, some great roommates here too, which is, which is great. Um, the way it's kind of set up, but in terms of this group as a whole, I mean, everyone, there's a lot of people here that are, you know, doing really well and it's exciting because I can get better in different things. Cause you know, I'm not, you know, not the best at, at some, some things here. So it's good to be pushed by, um, by a group. Oh, uh, are there specific things that you feel like you're not the best at or, or areas you're looking to improve? Yeah. Well, like they, they have some, like, obviously the, the more distance things, right. I'm, I'm a, I'm a sprinter guy, you know, quick, um, short, short distances. So when you get over, you know, get to the, you know, like 400 and we, the other day we did like 21s, you know, I'm not going to be at the front, but obviously I have some people to, to push and like, um, go and chase, which is, which is good. It's refreshing. And, uh, you know, I, I like that challenge. Uh, just in terms of, of yards training, have you ever swam yards before? I mean, I've, I've been to Florida on some training camps, had a little bit of a training in like a yards pool, but like, this is the first time I'm doing like practices and stuff in yards. And I mean, it, it, it's shorter. Um, it's, it, it's going to take some getting used to man. So, um, but I mean, it's, it's nothing too crazy. Um, it's been, it's, it's been obviously I'm, I'm learning a lot down here. So yeah. Um, just from the first again, a few weeks, month that you have been down there. What do you feel like the biggest takeaway is either in swimming or just, you know, adjusting to college life or, um, what do you feel like, you know, if, if you were going to sum up your first month, what, what would be the, the, the bottom liner for you? So, I mean, I would say busy, you got to be on top of your stuff. Cause it's like, you know, wake up early for practice. Um, I have a early class, so, you know, you have a practice and then you go to weights I have to go the weights a little earlier. Um, the the schedule is really flexible around school, which I like. Um, and then you know weights, and then school, and then lunch, maybe a nap, and then practice again on the double days. So I'll definitely say busy. Um, I'm excited to see how I kind of move and get better as I get more used to this program. Um, and I just feel like I honestly needed a a, a fresh start. You know, I knew. To, to go somewhere and have a different per perspective on things um, to see what I, what I want and what I like. So I think coming down here was a, was a great decision and yeah. um, I'm enjoying it so far. Did, did I have a couple more Florida questions? Did you have a relationship with coach Nesty before he had reached out to you um, for that recruiting? No, no, I didn't. Um, um, obviously he's from, he's from Suriname and, um, my dad's from Venezuela. I grew up in the, in the Caribbean. So they were kind of all, you know, close in, in that sense. But I, obviously I knew of him. I knew of coach Nesty, but we didn't have any relationship, um, before, but, um, we're looking at building a good relationship now. That's, that's really cool and really exciting. Um, and then <clears throat> again, just one other swim nerd question. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you, you've never raced yards before. You look, I, I've been to that Florida pool. You look up at the record boards and again, in your primary events, <laughs> those records are nuts to me. I'm wondering yeah. if you have like any context for them or how fast those, you know, those Dressel records are of 17, six, 42, eight, and hundred fly 39, nine, and hundred free. Um, you know, wh what do you think when you see times like that? 
I mean, when I mean, I'm a competitive person, so I look at those times and I'm like, okay, we we want to be there where those times are. Um, that's just what I'm thinking. I'm looking at those times. Uh, you know, I want to go 17. I want to go, you know, under 40 in the in the hundred free. Um, e even though I don't even know what it it looks like, right? I'm gonna have to get into a meet. I'm excited for my first meet to see what it's like. Um, in, in terms of uh swimming yards, so I'm super excited for that. Um, but you know, in, in terms of the person that I am, when I look at those records, I want to be around what I want to be at that, at that point. So, yeah. That excites me. <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, and that's, that's so cool. Cause again, you didn't grow up around yards. And so you may not have so, so many preconceived notions as someone who did, um, which, which is really cool. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah. I'm excited to see how the dual meets go and how your first season goes as a Gator. Um, yeah. So let's take it back. Oh, go it, ahead. Go ahead. It, it's a bit of a mystery. So, I mean, I'm just going to let it rip. Um, that's that's what I'm going to do. Um, I Obviously, I, I have some goals, but I don't have like a platform, you know, even in terms of like a best time, I don't really even have one. So I'm just going to go go into my events and just see what happens. And obviously try to try to go fast. I mean, just go fast. Yeah. Which uh, to me is a great mindset. Um, so again, let's take it back a little. And you, with, with that mindset uh, in mind, um, heading into world championships, you would had a lot of success at, at short course worlds last December in Abu Dhabi. Um, obviously you, you've just kind of been going up and up and up in terms of, I'm assuming your training and, and your best times. Um, so headed into worlds, did, did you have specific goals for that meet or focuses that you were trying to, you know, stay in touch with or achieve? Yeah. So, I mean, I went to worlds in, in 2019 and at that point I was, I only made it for a relay. I, I swam the 50 fly, but I made it in the, the four by one medley. Um, so I didn't have any in individual events, right. And this Going into this world, I had, you know, a lot of individual events um, and in individual swims. So, um, I mean, I just obviously wanted to, to, to do well, you know, at, at this meet. And I was, look, I was looking at getting on that podium. I was looking at obviously my times compared to, compared to you know, everyone else and like what a medal would look like. I would sit down with my coaches and talk because this was a real, a real goal of mine, getting on that podium. And that's what we work towards in practice, you know, in, in goal setting. Um, and it's that that was what was on my mind. And I went in kind of with that mentality heading into the meet. Um, so throughout the meet, again, obviously you want to, you got on the podium twice individually in the hunter free and the hunter fly. Um, I'm kind of curious, did anything on paper, it kind of seems like you met your goals. Did anything not go according to plan during those seven, eight days in Budapest? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning at, at this point. So there's, there's always something in a race where, you know, you, you I look at my race and kind of see like it was the way my technique is or the way I swim the first 50 or anything like that. And, and just like technical pieces of the race and kind of the way I execute it isn't, you know, to the point of um, where, where it could be at this point. So there's like, I, I was always looking at, um, um, looking at my races after and analyzing them and being, okay, this is where I can improve for next time. But there wasn't really a race that I kind of came out of. And I was like, like that's a that, that was a bad race maybe i would say maybe the 50 free i thought i had more in it just because i didn't didn't like execute it didn't nail the start the way I, I i could have and probably the the worst start of the of my meet was probably that 50 free final um but just in terms of the the meet as a whole i thought i handled myself well um swam swam the way swam swam my best so yeah uh Going into the hundred free final, you know, there was a lot going on there. Um, Caleb had pulled out of the meet at that point. David Popovich was on fire. Uh, you know, just, it was, there was a lot of hype heading into this final for you. What was your mentality heading in? And again, kind of how were you able to stay in your own lane, uh, knowing that, knowing that Popovich was going to do what he did? Yeah. So 
in like talking about, you know, Popovich doing what he did. Um, I had a talk with my coach Ryan, um, at the time. And he's like, if, you know, if someone wants, like at that point I was having the fast, the consistently the fastest first 50, um, out of that, that field. I mean, he's like, you know, if someone wants a medal, they're going to have to pass you. So your job is to, you know, not get passed. And that's the kind of mentality that I took into that race is not going to change my race plan or anything. I'm just going to go out the way I've been going out. And obviously I'm, I'm a racer. Um, I, I, I like that feeling of, you know, the, the race coming down to the wire at the end. And I, I went for it and I, you know, closed the race as best as I could and, and, and raced those guys. So that was kind of my mentality leading up to it um, in terms of like the hype uh, leading up and, Obviously, Caleb wasn't there, which was a, a shame. I, you know, hope he's all good and, you know, gets um, gets right and gets back because it's going to be, you know, really fun to have him, especially now that I'm training here in Florida. Um, but in, in terms of that, that moment at the meet, I was just – I was kind of staying in my own lane and swimming my race. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of similarly for the 100 fly – um, did you have a strategy for that final or were you, were you feeling any kind of certain way heading into that race, knowing that there were some tough guys, but again, you had a very legitimate shot to get on that podium. Yeah. I mean, and especially cause this was right at this point, this was right after the 53 cause it, I, the order had swapped. It was before in the prelim semi, it was hunter fly, then 53. And this time it was a 53, then the hunter fly 53. I just missed out on a medal. Um, but I kind of had to put that behind me and then obviously go in and swim the hunter fly pretty soon after. Um, and then that was a busy day for me. Um, and hunter fly was just trying to like, again, swim, swim my own race. Um, and you know, I got my hand on that wall and, and got a bronze medal. So as nothing couldn't be, um, disappointed with that. I was pretty happy with that swim. Um, and you know, a good field of swimmers too. Yeah, absolutely. And so overall seemed like a successful world. And then you have this weird dynamic, which normally would never happen of five ish weeks later, you're going to Commonwealth games, um, you know, all in one summer. Can you tell me about that experience? Just overall, obviously it is the Commonwealth games. It's, 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 I'm guessing it's a much different experience than the world champs, just given mm-hmm. that you are in a village and uh, it's, it's, there's a little more hype around the meet. Yeah. I mean, there, there was a, like the village kind of setup is obviously a lot different from uh, how it would be at a, at a, at a world. Um, and there's a lot of things you have to be more prepared for and make sure you're on your game and try to control everything that you can so that you can have a, have a good race. Um, yeah, I mean the, the turnaround, I would definitely say, um, I, I was definitely a little like tired a bit at, at Commonwealth. I could have managed probably my turnaround from worlds, um, leading into Commonwealth. Cause I would say I definitely was, was a little fatigued, um, at that meet, but I mean, I, I still did, you know, what, what I always do. And I just raced my hardest. What was the turnaround? Like, I mean, how, how did what were you doing in those five weeks? You know, is it trying to maintain a, a taper? Is it coming back up and then coming back down? Yeah. So we, like, we came back up, um, got, got back in the weight room. Um, and then eventually like we started having, you know, some just went right back up in terms of like practices and stuff like that. And, and then we went, we had a, a camp in France um our staging was there and then started tapering there so we we, yeah we went up and then back down um pretty pretty quick turnaround and and then we headed into the meet Mm -hmm. um so again you you swam the same individual events in birmingham at at com games as you did at worlds that 100 free final in in birmingham did that have can you compare the the feeling of that final Versus the final in Worlds, um, I guess just with the competition that was there, as well as um, just the the, exci- the level of excitement or pressure that you felt there. Yeah, I mean, 
my my freestyle i would say i mean it it was a little bit off at at the the commonwealth games it wasn't even you know through the relays and stuff it wasn't really um where i wanted it to be um in terms of the the pressure i mean i don't know i at, at that point i was still looking at kind of just you know racing um and in that final obviously i i, I raced but kind of felt it on, on that back end i'm not gonna lie um but yeah i'm I, I wasn't happy with that swim obviously i i know i was capable of a of a lot better um and that was just like analyzing things you know when i went back in terms of like obviously learning from that experience um and how i can you know like get better um from from that yeah yeah. Now uh, to, to give our listeners some context, I realize uh, you were 48, six in that final at Commonwealth games for seventh place. Um, so then, <clears throat> but then you come back and, uh, and again, when, when two individual medals, um, especially the, the hunter fly, you won in 51, two, I believe. Yes, uh, one, two. Yeah. Uh, but it was quite, a, it was a tight field. Um, again, can yeah. you kind of compare the, the, those fields, especially that field from worlds. And, um, surprisingly, even though, the, uh, you know, you have a world championships where in theory, the world's best are there versus a calm games where, you know, it's, it's very specific countries. Yeah. It still yeah. seemed like a very tight field. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty tight. Obviously we had like great guys in that field, Matt Temple, James guy, Chad Leclo was in there. Um, so it, it wasn't like a walk in the park. It was a very tough race, especially a, the, a tough meet. Um, so, I mean, in, in that hundred fly, uh, my, my fly was feeling pretty good during the meet, but at, at that point, at the end of the meet, I just wanted to, you know, get my hand on that wall first. I mean, I, I knew where I was in terms of how I've been swimming it, uh, obviously through the prelims and the final or, and the semi, um, felt good for that final and, in my mind, I was like, let's go, let's go for this gold medal right here. Um, and then, you know, had, had a good turn and then timed my touch well, and then it, it, it worked out. So, um, that was a good, that was, a, that was a nice moment. Yeah. Did, has that impacted you, affected you at all? Just winning that first major international individual title? Yeah, I mean, it kind of just reinforces that like this is what I'm capable of, right? I don't, obviously, that was my first one. I don't want it to be the last, right? And I'm just going to, uh, I have some work to do. Like you said, the the field at Worlds was a faster field, um, obviously, because I um, I was third with a 50.9 at, at, at that meet. But, I mean, I, I, I'm getting better and I'm learning, so I'm just going to, keep striving and keep and my goal is to get a, a goal again. So, yeah. Uh, with, with that in mind, with, you know, first individual title, you, you, you're doing, you're doing your thing, you know, you're going best times. Um, I'm, I'm curious about your goals moving forward, but I want to preface that with w- what did you make of, uh, of David Popovich's hundred free world record, you know, something that we haven't seen touched in 13 years even though we've seen a lot of guys get close that kind of seemingly broke the barriers for what might be possible for a lot of us so w- what did you think of that i mean you you also have to look at his his mindset right obviously he's a he's a great swimmer um great technique all of that stuff young guy but i mean just for how young he is and having that mindset you know, I've, I've recent, I've even more recently, I mean, I'm, I'm 20 now turned 20, um, last month. Um, but when, when I was his age, my kind of mentality wasn't at that point. Like he's, he has a elite mindset and, um, you know, that's why he's able to, you know, go, you know, 46, eight in the, in a hundred free. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not intimidated by that. I mean, I, he, he's a good kid. I, I talked to him, obviously a, a great person, great swimmer. And I mean, I, I want to be able to challenge that in the future, right? He's the kind of, he's the target now in terms of what everyone's looking at. I mean, he kind of pushed the barrier further. Now everyone's got to look at going, you know, 46s if you, if you want a medal. So, I mean, that that's the goal in mind right now. If, 
if you were going to write out a 46 8 for yourself on paper, do you know what the splits would be for you? I mean, yeah, I wouldn't I'm I'm not coming back in a 23, I don't think, but um I mean, I would look at going out a 20 22 low. I would say, I mean, when I went that 47, five, I think I was back in a four, eight. And, you know, if here working on my back half and obviously the front half starting stuff, getting stronger, obviously, as I, as I grow, I think I could, I, I want to, yeah, let's see what that looked like. 46, eight, you said like 22, one, 24, seven, that's 46, eight. That's that's the way in my head when I'm looking at goal setting. That's the way I would want to split it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's some serious speed. But it, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, again, just it's exciting to think about ag- again because we don't really know what's possible. You know, this this has shown us like, all right, maybe maybe these barriers can be broken further than than we thought they could. Yeah, so it's exciting. Um, Look at looking at more of a team perspective um, yeah. for Team Canada. I mean, the men had a huge year, uh, yeah. not just you, but in relays as well. What do you make of of Team Canada, especially the four hundred free, four hundred medley relays moving into this year internationally? I mean, we're we're on the come up, right? And I think that's also we're showing the rest of the world that you know we can the like. The Olympics, it's not a, it wasn't a fluke when we made that final. Was in the fight for a bronze medal there. Um, like we're serious contenders. Obviously, you know, there's other countries trying to build relays around around swimmers as well. But we have some decent guys. Like we have a we have a good group of guys now that can challenge people on the world level. And I mean, it's it's super exciting to see. Obviously, um, we had Javier Acevedo come in, train at the High Performance Center. Rusin came in started training i mean even that short amount of time that they came down to train i mean everyone improved during that time and we were all pushing each other and i mean it's i mean i think it's it's good for the future the way it's going you know if yuri yuri comes back he's healthy um i mean it's gonna be we're gonna have a really good relay so it's it's exciting to see the boys doing something you know the girls the girls been doing their thing but the the guys are ready now to you know put put up some some good times and good performances do you know where javi will train now i mean i'm assuming rusin might go back to ohio state do you know where javi's gonna be um not too sure javi's taking a little bit of a break um obviously busy summer for him too um i mean he did great in a lot of best times this summer for him as well so he's gonna take a little bit of break i think refocus um i think he's gonna try and go down to the the center i think he'll be there um i'll obviously go back whenever I, whenever i have a break like christmas or anything like that i'll be that's where i'll be training when i go back home for a holiday or anything mm-hmm. um so obviously i'll have more information as i go back and see what uh, what's going on there I've, i'm in good contact with ryan still um and yeah so rusin is back at ohio i know that he wanted to stay in the group, but he had to finish up school. Um, but it, it's good. I'm going to keep in contact with those guys because I know that, you know, this really can do something special. And we have we have a good good group of guys. I mean, you never know. Someone else can come up. I mean, us, you know, these guys performing is going to make those younger kids want to, you know, get on the relay too. So we'll see what happens in the future. But, I mean, it, it's exciting to see the guys doing something, you know. The women have been doing good, but – it's time for us to, you know, uh, show, show Canada that the men can do something too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to see it. You guys, I feel like you guys winning that bronze at com games was, was, was a big step forward and exciting to see as a fan. Um, so I, I hope that you are able to continue and improve that. Do you know what Yuri's situation is at the moment? Yeah, Yuri is. He went down to to Calgary. Um, obviously, like he had a he like little bit of uh, injury issues. I won't get too much into that. I think you probably talk to him on like what that would be. But you know, I think once he gets that sorted and he's healthy, 
I mean, Yuri's a great swimmer, great trainer. I mean, 47-1 at that Olympic Games, I definitely remember that. That's embedded in my mind. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I told him he's looking at 20 – he told me, like, 2021, 2020, like, it became 2021, but he was looking at that being maybe his his last last Olympic Games. And I'm like, dude, you know, fourth place, we were right there. We got to get you a medal before you retire. So you're coming back for one more. Seriously, come on, yeah. what one one more ride, Yuri? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, once he gets right, I mean, his his mindset and obviously he's really excited about this relay too going forward, and even his individual swims. I mean, he's a he's a great swimmer, so I'm excited. You know, I've I've been talking to him, and you know, once he gets back into it, I'm I'm excited to see what he does. <laughs> Nice. Uh, well, uh, much appreciated for those updates, um, and much appreciated for the for the update on you. Uh, congrats on making it to Gainesville and and this new start. Uh, obviously, we're really excited to see how it goes. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule to sit down and talk, Josh. Any parting thoughts before we sign off today? Um, no. Uh, thanks for having me. It's you know good to be in Gainesville. You know they be getting helped out a lot here which is, which is great so i mean I, i'm excited to see what the the future holds here and what this next job what's the, what this uh next job is gonna bring you've been listening to the swim swam podcast stay tuned for new episodes every week you can take swim swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.